into a holiday season. Right now it's getting close to the end of November. It's just before Thanksgiving US time here. And so I am going to do a fun little project which is making a little retro apron. And you know because a lot of baking and cooking and everything coming up here. And um, I have a pattern that I have had for quite some time. I'm not actually sure if it's a current one or not, but as we get into it, you'll see you don't actually need this pattern. And what I'm going to be doing, it, well, here's my pattern, okay, but I'm actually going to be making something similar to this. And what I have are sub, I have, I have a retro vintage apron collection that I've you know, pulled together and inherited from here and there. And I have several um, examples of similar era type aprons that I want to show you a couple of them so you can get an idea of where I'm going. Because the pattern uses a huge amount of fabric for a little half size apron. So even though I'm going to kind of use that pattern, I'm going to be modifying it a little bit. So let me tip the camera down. I'll show you what I mean. Alrighty, so first let me give you a close up of this one. And the main point is the big round pockets. Okay, it's just a gathered half, half apron gathered to a waistband tie but it's got these big round scoop pockets, okay? And um, I wanna show you this one, which is one of my collection that I use, and I use them, you know, it's, that's the thing is I use them, so I'm thinking, you know, I'm gonna make a couple more. But see how they have the big round pocket here, but they, instead of putting it on the front like this, they actually have the round pocket on the back, all right? So, and I have another one somewhere. Um, I think it's downstairs right now. But um, I, what I wanted to point out is these are not super, super full. And I have made some aprons based on these types of patterns. And it seems wasteful. And it doesn't seem period authentic to me. Most of the aprons that I have acquired are not very wide. It's basically, um, like for this one, yes, granted this was made for a slimmer person than I am. But in general, it's made to go across the front, wrap slightly towards the back, but not all the way around. You don't need an apron to cover the back side. And so they're not super gathered and they're not super wide, okay? Like here is another one. Um, and this, again, you probably cannot see because it blends and everything, but there's just some little pockets here. It's a apron on a tie, and this one comes to a point in the front. You know, it's got a little point to point. And this one actually has a little seam here, which is probably more like a side seam type thing. Okay, but my main point to show you is that they are not super wide, super gathered, super huge. These are utilitarian. We're gonna get some stuff done. We wanna protect our dress so we don't have to wash our dresses often. You know, it's easier to wash an apron than a dress. And if the apron is super wide and super full and has a boatload of fabric in there, then that defeats the purpose. The purpose is to have something easier that you can like grab, 
wipe your hands off on and then throw it you know I, I was gonna say throw it in the washing machine whatever you know that the period that they were using these whatever but what I'm going to be doing then is this pattern in general but I'm only doing half the width and what I mean is like in the instructions here if this is a 45 inch wide fabric they want you to do just about two full lengths so that is what 80 something inches of width that they want gathered into an apron and to me that just doesn't sound authentic that doesn't sound like something they would use at the most in all of my aprons that tie at the most they're 30 something inches this one is 21 inches from this point to this point okay so for a happy medium what I am going to be doing is instead of cutting two rectangles and gathering this huge full thing I'm only going to cut one length so what I would say is if you're going to be doing this similar to what I am doing figure out what finished length you want your apron to be whatever your fancy is these in general a lot of my vintage aprons they're all a similar length that basically come to my knee okay or thereabouts this one from the bottom of the waistband to the edge of the hem is 20 inches okay below that I don't really need so what I am going to be doing is from my piece of fabric doing a just tearing a strip straight across okay because I'm just going to use one width and so I want a hem of about an inch and I want enough room up in the top to work into my waistband okay or my tie I would say and so I'll give myself another inch for that so basically the first thing I'm going to do is take my fabric and I have a hundred percent cotton fabric here with some little birds that I I bought this a couple years ago you know it's good for this time of year and I am going to tear this into a strip that is 22 inches wide so the first thing I'm going to do is clip the top because you can't tear, tear the bottom until you know that the top is completely straight oh my goodness this is tough to tear hang on let me cut it a little deeper okay so now I know that the top part of this is torn 100% straight okay so I'm going to go ahead and measure down 22 inches and tear it again okay so I have that done set aside and the way that I'm going to be doing the interface or the waistband is uh, like they did it on this sample apron which is basically if say you take your waist circumference okay so just for ease let's say mine is 30 all right I want my let me get something to draw with hold on a second this is how we're going to do this or at least how I'm going to do this so let's say my waist all the way around is 30 inches okay I want my apron if this is my very front here say that's my belly button I want my apron here's my sides to go past the sides to right about here it's not important to me that it covers my whole rear okay so what that is is basically let's be generous and say um, that if we divide my whole body here up into thirds my waist my waistband the front part the part that is going to be directly on top of where this is is two-thirds of this for me I just like to do the math thing and so that the word of always means multiply so two-thirds times 30 equals 60 over 3 
simplify that is 20 inches you know you do you you can always you can also do multiplying it on your calculator times 0 0.6667 whatever okay so I need my front part of my waistband here to be 20 inches from this point to this point and you can see there's like a little seam right here okay and I need it to be a thickness or a, a width so this is going to be my piece it's going to be 20 inches plus seam allowance so we're going to give an extra inch for that so we're going to cut a piece that's 21 inches this way and then for this dimension what I want to do is take however tall I want it to be and I'm using this as my example and this waistband is about an inch and a quarter tall which means it's two and a half inches cut before it's doubled which means I have to add a seam allowance of half an inch on each side about so I'm going to make it three and a half inches you know this way so I'm going to cut a piece this way then that is going to wrap around to this point okay what this one then has is the other piece of fabric that was cut um, that's three and a half on the other side because say you have a piece of fabric that is 45 inches wide okay this is the fold this piece is going to go here well you're not going to waste and the whole thing about aprons common sense wise is you're not going to waste fabric okay these are utilitarian things that we're doing here so if this is for this piece over here this piece here you cut it in half like this and you have two pieces that you can then slightly gather right there and um, so onto your back if you need to you know you can do longer ties if you like fuller ties do fuller ties you know you do you but so the tie on this one is 23 inches so that adds about right you know if I do 23 plus 21 is 44 which is about the width of fabric so that's how it was done and I like it that way because sometimes when you have an apron and it is so big and full and dramatic it's too cumbersome and it just doesn't fit in the in the drawer and everything and I end up not wearing it you know and here she is posing dramatically in her little apron but we're going to improvise so with all that the next thing I'm going to do is um, rip because you know I already have the bottom ripped I'm going to rip another strip of fabric three and a half inches um, wide or three and a half inches tall the whole strip and then I'm going to be cutting it this way so at 21 inches I will cut it and then that remaining strip I will be cutting in half this way so I have two strips um, that are the extra size all right so I've got these two torn this is my front piece I'm just going to set it aside this piece I'm going to go over to my ironing board iron it nice and flat then fold it in half iron it in half this way so I have a nice crease and then I'll use that crease to cut down this way okay so I am just slicing those ties in half here and uh, the last part is the pocket now this pattern comes with a pocket piece every apron I have has pockets but they're all different but what I can tell you is if you want to do something like this get a big dinner plate okay set your big dinner plate down and trace around it and then at the fullest part just continue up and the length from the top of this pocket to the very bottom is about 12 inches let's move you up here okay from the top to the bottom is about 12 inches so if you want to make your own that's what it is and just for reference over here what they have for an opening is about four and a quarter wide and the depth of this pocket 
is about five inches. Okay, so if you want to duplicate that, you don't really need this piece. Just put down a dinner plate, trace around it, extend it up, you know, make something like that. Now, for the pocket, you can use the same fabric. You can use a contrasting fabric, you know. It's kind of the fun thing with aprons is you can be as creative as you want to be. I'm going to be using um, the same fabric, but I'm going to be using a contrasting fabric to make bias tape to outline it so that it has a little bit of definition. So let me go ahead and cut two of these out of my fabric also. All right, and if you have rickrack and trims and things that you have stashed around and didn't know when to use it, I can think of no better time than making a vintage apron. And I'm going to, I have this um, skirt facing and it's much too wide. It's um, just much too wide, but I can cut, I can fold this in half iron it so I have a crease there and then cut it down this edge and that would actually let me just lay it on here to make sure so if I fold this in half and work it here ah, close enough that's going to work to outline my pocket okay now I just opened this up you know I love old things and I was looking I don't even know when this is from I'm not sure I have a date on here but the inside of this is so adorable. And it was talking about um, making a little girl's garment and it's giving the whole whys and wherefores so that um, how, to, how to make a little garment. And they're calling it make a petty blouse. And I'd never heard of a petty blouse, so I wanted to share this with you. It's basically when you're a little girl and they didn't want to wear the baby style things, but they were too small to wear just a waistband type skirt because there's really no waist to hold things up. They would make a blouse that has a petticoat attached to the bottom and they were advertising to use their trims on the petticoat down here. So then when you put the little overskirt over the petticoat that's attached to the blouse, there's enough fullness that it'll stay on. And I thought that was just an adorable little idea. And it even gives an old simplicity number there for it, 4383. I have no idea when this was made, probably in the 50s, I am guessing. Um, but just thought I would share that with you. So anyway, I'm going to go through, find some trims, and play with those while I'm making this. So the first thing I need to do, set my pocket and trims aside here, this is my big skirt. I'm going to make a narrow hem down each side of my skirt. I'll just be um, where you fold it at about 3 8 of an inch, iron it that way, and then tuck it in. So it's a nice little hem that's like a fat eighth of an inch hem. And then just with the machine, stitch it down. And I'm going to do that to both of the sides of my little apron skirt first. Okay, I've got my edges hemmed. And now I am going to hem the bottom before I get anything else done. So what I'm going to do is just put a small hem. It doesn't need to be huge. I'm going to turn it under probably about half an inch and then turn it up again and just do another straight stitch straight across the bottom here. So I've got it pressed, but I have not sewn it yet because once I've pressed it down here, this little fat edge there, I am just going to clip that off, um, leaving about an eighth of an inch for the first turn and then again. And that's just going to make sure it's not too much thickness right here at the edge and that nothing's going to be sticking out when I sew it. It's time to get kind of creative with the pockets before I actually attach that to the band. So I'm going to get my pocket pieces here. And remember I showed you this little wide, wide strip. I'm going to use this for an edge, but it's too wide the way it is. So over at my ironing board, I'm going to fold it in half and, and press it so I get a crease and then cut this at that crease so I end up with two different strips of bias tape. All right, I have my pocket sitting here upside down. That's why it looks kind of odd. And I'm folding my bias tape strip in half because I don't have a huge amount and I want to make sure I have it centered. 
So I am going to place the center of my bias tape. I folded my pocket in half and put a little mark right here where that center is. I'm going to pin it right there just so I can make sure that all will be well there. So if I go ahead and just trying it out here just to double check. Yay, I'm going to have plenty. I will have plenty, so not going to stress about it. So what I'm going to do is sew this to the front first and then wrap it around. Alrighty, so to show you how I'm going to do this, I'm putting my pocket fabric here face up and placing my bias tape like this. So I have a folded edge facing up here, the flat side, or, you know, if it was folded, the opened thin side. I'm just going to line up with the very edge of my fabric. And starting up here at the top, do a little back stitch to hold it. And I'm just going to run it using the edge of my presser foot as my seam gauge. And that's going to give me a quarter inch or thereabout seam allowance, you know. Different feet, it's a little bit different. So as I come to the curve, I just kind of pull my little bias tape gently over and it's going to flex enough. You know, I'm not yanking on it. I don't really want to stretch it. I'm just kind of guiding it over as I go so that I can make the curve like that and then I'll just continue that way all around to up here and then trim it. Okay so now over here at the ironing board this is what it looks like on the right side you know it's just kind of hanging out there. So what I'm going to do is want to press the uh, tape just gently away from the front. I'm not trying to fold it or anything right now. I'm just basically trying to press it enough that at this point where where the seam is made, um, it's going to be pushing away from it. So when I go to the next step, it'll be easier. So again, right here, pressing away. Now, if you're doing this and your hands are super close, I would suggest you don't use a lot of steam because that steam can burn, you know. All right, so now that it's just pressed so it's going to lay out flat, what I'm going to do is turn it under to the back and press it again. Now, if it is not, let me trim these threads here. Okay, so if this is not perfect, you know, if your edge does not line up exactly with your stitching, that's okay. It's never going to be seen, so that's fine. Okay, so down here around the corners, you can kind of just mold it a little bit, set it in place, and iron it. Again, while, if, while I'm working on something with that my hands have to be real close to it, I do not push the steam button. That's a bad thing. I don't like that. Okay, so like down here, it's not going to match up perfectly. No one's going to know. Nobody's going to know. Just go ahead and keep ironing it all the way around so that then when you're done on the right side there's a nice edge here. Yes, this is not attached yet. We'll deal with that later. Okay? Okay, so now I need to do the exact same thing on this inside curve here. Um, it looks kind of shallow to me. So assuming that this is where the pocket opening is, can you fit your hand in there? Well, yeah, I can. You know, it's not the super deepest, but then at least you have a secure big pocket to throw your phone or whatever into. So I'm okay with that. I'm out of red bias tape, so I found another super wide piece here. This one's navy blue. So I'm going to do the same thing where I fold it in half and cut it to get two strips out of it. And I'm going to so do just like I did here where I sew it at a quarter inch and then press it over and then turn it under and press it again. Um, around this inside edge on both pockets. All right, so now I have my inner bias tape at the same stage as the outer, which is it's sewed on, it's pressed around, and it's still not attached on this side. Now, this one you do need to uh, finish off. This one, not so much, because we're going to do that when we sew it to the apron. 
this one, your hand's going to be going in and out of there. This needs to get sewed down. So when I was folding it over, I made sure that my edge is at least to my stitching line, if not past it. Okay. So I did that all the way around. Now I'm going to come back with a navy blue thread in my machine and I'm going to run a row of stitching. Not really a stitch in the ditch because I don't feel like being that careful. If I did a stitch in the ditch, which means stitching straight down this seam line, um, if this is a little bit off in the back, it might come off, you know. So I'm going to be probably doing it slightly on the blue side here and just running a row of stitches straight down all the way around and that should catch the back side of this and hold it nice and secure. Okay, so the pockets are done and I have, this is my front band that I'm going to be using. All right, and what I have marked on here is five eighths of an inch. I drew a line on each side as a guide, and I also put a line at the center point. Okay, just gonna set that aside for a minute. On my big skirt at the top, I've also marked that same center point. Okay, so I'm gonna fold it. Get some threads out of the way here. Hang on a sec. I'm going to fold it in half, and I actually have already done this, but um, put a mark here at the center point. And then once you fold it in half, fold it in half one more time to give you that halfway point between the center front and the edge of your apron skirt, and put another mark right there where that point is, okay? So it, now I'm going to open up my skirt here and I'll do the same thing on both sides. <clears throat> Excuse me. So where this point is, which is halfway between the center front and the edge, I'm going to center my pocket on here. So it's not super duper precise, but I can kind of eyeball that this is that mark and this is the center of my pocket. I'm just going to pin it in place. And at my machine, I'm going to put a red thread in it this time. And I will be stitching this down, um, edge stitching it near the edge on the red, on my bias tape edge, all the way around here. Hang on a second. So that um, it's going to hold two things. It'll hold my pocket to my skirt and also it's going to keep this bias tape tucked under. Good morning, welcome to the next day. And I have my pocket sewed on. I have edge stitched it here at the edge of my red tape so that now when I put my hands in, it's gonna stay. And while I was over there, I surged the tops of my pockets to my main apron fabric. So now what I'm going to do is go back and run two rows of gathering stitches across the top. Um, since I'm going to be gathering across these bias tapes, that might be a little extra tugging. So I'm going to make sure I use really strong thread in my bobbin so that when I pull it, nothing is going to break. So again, I'm going to run a row of stitches at about 3 8 of an inch and another one at about half an inch. So I have two sturdy rows to pull. Got my gathering stitches in. I use two different colors of thread so I can tell easily what is what. So I've got my fabric here. I'm going to make sure that I pin it so that when it's sewed, all my birds are upright, you know. I'm going to match up my center front mark on my little waistband thing with my center front mark on my apron. Just pin that together there and start pulling. I need to get the edge of my apron to end up at lining up with that 5 eighths inch mark, which I cannot see on this side. So I'm going to draw it again on this side, on the right side so I can see it. Okay, I'll do that over here too. But I want this finished end that has the narrow hem to line up right here where that 5 8 inch mark is. 
So I'm just actually going to stick a pin and hold it there right now and just start pulling and getting all of these gathers worked in as evenly as possible. Now on this uh, apron part, I have a line that I centered my pocket placement on. I did not draw that on my waistband, but I'm going to right now just so that it'll be nice and even. So I've got a little mark here that is the center between the back and up here. And I'm just going to make sure that I put my little center point there so that on both sides that pocket will be somewhat symmetrical. Okay, and then just keep on gathering. One thing I've noticed on a lot of the old aprons that I collect is um, it's like an easy, quick sewing project where they were able to use all kinds of things. I've seen amazing pocket options and, you know, trim work and embroidery things and stuff on aprons just because it almost seemed like it was a project where they were trying something out before they did the real thing on a dress or something. So anyhow, I don't know if that's how it was, but it just, it's, you know, it's a fun project. So enjoy it. All right. I will be right back. Okay, so I've got this side all gathered. I'm going to go ahead and tie a knot in my gathering threads at this point, just so that it doesn't want to undo itself. So I made a big old loop, stick a pin down here and cinch it up. And that way, um, you know, it's going to be a little bit more secure. And I can flip it up here, get this big old long thread out of the way. <laughs> that side's done. Let me gather the other side. Okay, so I have it gathered up and pinned on. I kind of left it a little flatter the last inch or so over here towards the edge, just, you know, because I think that that will work out well. But you can see this is a fairly tight gather. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and sew it on and I will be sewing it with the gathered side up so that I can, oopsie, I almost pulled my pin out here. So that as I'm sewing it, I can make sure that I straighten everything out, don't have any puckers, and I can also make sure that my stitching is not going to let all of my gathering stitches show. So start up here, make sure that I still have my 5 8 inch seam allowance peeking out the side, and sew it all the way down. All right, got it sewed on. So when I just push that up, you know, it's coming together really cute. I need to set this aside for a minute and get my two little ties that I'm going to be putting on the back. And I'm just going to do a narrow hem. Excuse my threats. I'm just going to do a narrow hem down each side. When I'm making my narrow hem on my strips, I'm going to be using one of my little rolled hem feet. This is not necessary, but it does work pretty well on long straight pieces. These are kind of a nightmare to use on curved edge pieces, but for this, it should be pretty good. So all different ways to start them up to get my thread through the little slot there. What I like to do is turn under an edge and turn it under again and up here at the top, which is going to be kind of in the seam allowance, stick the entire thing underneath the presser foot and run a couple stitches just to get it anchored. Then lift the presser foot. Actually, I should put my needle down and lift that little curved edge up over the rolly part. Set the whole thing back down again. And then I kind of pre-fold this up here and guide it so that it's going to want to curve the right way. <clears throat> Excuse me. And just let her go. Okay, so then I'm just going to kind of with it slightly pre-folded just so it's going to want to curve the right way. I can just start stitching down the edge. And it's going to give me a... This is actually, they, these come in all different sizes. This is a very fat rolled hem foot. So it's going to give me a fatter rolled hem, but that's fine for me. Okay, so the way I'm going to finish the edges of this, it's just, you know, one way out of however many you do you, is I'm going to be folding it in half with the right sides together and the edges lined up. 
and come here and do a very slight diagonal stitch. Pull this out to see what kind of a rat nest I got myself into. Okay, you can see a little better there. There's a little diagonal stitch. I'm just going to trim it somewhat close to that stitch and flip this right side out ish. It's not going to come all the way out because you know that's a very small little opening there but it's just enough that I can pop that in and the end is going to be hidden and so hopefully it will not unfray or anything like that you know kind of simple now this side over here this is the side that I'm going to sew onto my apron okay so back over here with my apron I need to find that center point so remember there's a seam allowance here so if I fold this down so that my two edges meet this point up here at the top I'm going to draw a little line on that well it didn't show up but right here is going to be the top of my band. And if you see, when you fold up the seam allowance here and you fold this down here, it should line up to the width of this or thereabouts. Now I needed to mark that because um, the top, I'm going to take one of my straps here, the top edge of one of my straps lines up with that center line. Put a pin right there. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Line it up the same way, like this, and then just stitch it across here at 5 8 All right, so I've got my little strap sewed on here. Just have my bottom seam allowance turned up. Folding this over and turning up the seam allowance so that it is just a little bit lower can see it better if I put it so this is the back this is the um, part right here that's my seam allowance there I'm folding the front part down so it's about a little less than an eighth of an inch lower okay I'm gonna stick a pin here and so straight across here at 5 8 um, making sure that I don't catch this part just right across here all right, so I'm coming here and trim off some of that bulk up at the corner and then just flip this entire thing right side out. Can tug on my little strap there. Do the same thing on the other side. Trim it down, oh, probably a little less than a quarter inch. Take some of that up at the top and pull my little strap out here. I'm going to go ahead and go to my ironing board and iron this whole little top, putting a nice crease at the top. So as I would iron it, I'd tuck the little edge under and pin it so that now I have this whole thing pinned down so you cannot see the stitching. And I've pinned it so that my ends of my pins are sticking out. Okay, that way if I come back with this side up to run a row of top stitching, I can just pull the pins out this way. Okay, if the heads were underneath, it would be a lot trickier. And what I'm going to do is run a row of top stitching, <coughs> excuse me, right about an eighth of an inch above the seam line. That way I'll be sure to catch the back edge back here. So I'm just going to do that straight across. Okay, so you can see my stitching is quite a bit above the edge, but it's going to hold it. And on the front, it's a lot more straight there, but I am ready to go ahead and put it on my dress form. in my kitchen trying to find an angle where there's no mess but you know it is that time of year so so it's a cute little apron you know I think that it's going to work fine <clears throat> doing what it's supposed to do which is basically you know keep everything underneath clean big pockets always necessary but the fun thing with aprons are 
well, they should be fun in the first place, but also um, the, the idea of using a huge amount of fabric just seems wasteful to me, you know. And looking at the vintage patterns that I, or the vintage aprons, the true vintage aprons that I have, they're not huge. You know, they're sensible. And usually they're like this length to keep your dress clean or your pants clean or something, especially when you're working with flour and things that are going to make a mess. So anyhow, hope you liked it. Hope you make some. You know, make fun pockets. Use fun trim. Enjoy the time. Use contrasting fabrics. Just do whatever. Have fun with it. But I hope you enjoyed it. Have a happy, happy holiday season, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye. Horses, chicks, and dogs, they are my neighbors. I cook and sell and spin, and move the horses in to the barn. Then time to move them out again. Red barns, green pastures, beautiful my houses. The view I see each day when I arise. This light pleases me, as it is plain to see. I'm living. My bucolic life